Authorities have warned one million people to flee inland as Hurricane Ike gets closer to the Texas coast. Many people along the Texas coast are boarding up their homes and businesses. Some residents have written words on the boards asking Ike to leave them alone. President George Bush has declared a state of emergency in Texas. The move clears the way for federal aid to assist state and local disaster efforts. Hurricane Ike has already claimed 100 lives as it hurled through Cuba and other Caribbean islands. We heard that you stayed through, through Ike. Yeah, my partner and I, we, we, stayed, we stayed during Ike. We had an option of leaving, but uh, we didn't want to go to nobody else's house. You know, we, we're very private people. You know, our lifestyle doesn't allow us to be living with somebody else, you know. And uh, we thought about it, and I questioned him, and he was like, okay, babe, we got food and everything. We got supplies. We'll go ahead and stay. My name is Jonathan Henry. I'm 14 years old. I'm from Galveston, Texas. I attend Ball High School. I'm a freshman. I just love my family. I just love being around people. Galveston, it is wonderful. It's uh, crazy at times, but it's just wonderful. I love being around Galveston. I love Galvestonians. The people in Galveston are wonderful. We have all types of ex ethnicities here. White, black, Mexican, you name it. It's all here in Galveston. Well, I'm so happy to be a part of an island. Not many people can say that they live on an island in the USA. So I'm just glad to be here. All right, all right, good to see you. Happy New Year. Out of Africa, into the jungle. That's a real one, though. <laughs> you know it. Turn around, fat cat. The fat cat with the fat hat. <laughs> um, I'm Leon Phillips, the second. Born and raised in Galveston, Texas in 1948. But I, I'm born on the island, and they say that islanders have salt water in our veins. So we're, we're a breed amongst ourselves, you know. Galveston is 37 miles all the way around, and its widest point is four miles. We are the piece of land that actually stops a hurricane from being massive at the oil refineries just on the other side of Galveston Bay. We are a necessary evil, you know, um, but we're beautiful, you know, I mean, sunshine, you know, palm trees, bikinis. <laughs> The winds and the rain picked up at around 7.30, 7, 7.30. The sun was shining, and we were just sitting on the porch long enough until it was unbearable to sit there. And the house started shaking then. I didn't notice the house shaking until the second half of the storm, which was really bad. That's when the door flew open. I had to, with all my might, I had to push it closed, grab the slack, and put it like right up underneath the door. And so, I let it go, and you could just see it was just slowly just blowing open, 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 open. But after I found a way of uh, keeping the door shut, I uh, went, in the, went in my bedroom, which is right here, and I sat on the, end, on the side of the bed, and I was like, just like, what do we do? You know what I'm saying? How long is this gonna last? And then the end. You could just see it leaving. You could see it leaving. The birds start flying again. The sun came out. But I tell you, when, when the storm ended, it was like a parade. It was like one huge big parade just going on, on, on.
all came together. That was a devastating time for me because uh, when I came back and found out that my house had burned down to the ground, that made me really sad because I had all my photos, my toys, my videos, everything that I had was inside the house and it burned down to the ground. What would you say going through that time? That made me feel uh, sad to know that everything that I had was gone. When you start thinking about sea levels, I think of it this way. You probably had two and a half, maybe, maybe two blocks of, of sand before you would get to the, the Gulf of Mexico. Now, um, I would say a half a block out and you're in the water. Erosion has eaten up Galveston Island in that almost 60 years that I've been gone. In the near future, if water begins to just rise out of nowhere, it'll just begin to rise and rise and rise. We live on an island. We live on an island. We see it every day. Although we don't realize it as much, but we see it every day. Like with the waves and the wind and the trees and the plants and, the, and everything that goes on, we see it every day. And people who live off the island, they, they only see a portion of it. They don't get to see the full picture. Climate change is going to have to take everybody to fix it, you know. Um, and, I, and I honestly believe people are talking more about it than doing things about it. It's kind of like they're sitting around waiting if it's really going to happen. You hear scientists talk about, like, uh, global warming is going to happen and stuff like that. And you don't believe it at first until you actually see something of it. I'm just worried for my generation coming up because... We only have God knows how much time left on here. And with everything that's going on, I don't want the earth to be in danger. The more and more the Arctic melts, the more and more water is going to be in the Gulf of Mexico. Galveston Island is going to have erosion. It's inevitable, you know, that uh, 100 years from now, Galveston Island may not be here. I hope I don't live long enough to see it go away.